Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. Yes, I'm back in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. I have just returned from a short break to a place I used to visit often, but for many years I had not been to. I went for a holiday to the Malaysian island of Palau Penang, or as it is more commonly known, Penang. Needless to say, I took my video camera with me, and this is the result. The island of Penang is part of a state of Malaysia. The island itself sits to the northwest coast of the Malaysian mainland. The state of Penang consists of the island and part of the mainland. The island is formerly known as Palau Penang, but it is often referred to as simply Penang. It also has the title the Pearl of the Orient. The earliest mention of Penang goes back to the 15th century, with the name being used by the Chinese Navy. The name is derived from the word for a type of nut palm. Modern Penang can be traced back to the late 18th century when it was leased to the British Empire by the then Sultanate of Kedah, of which Penang was a part. The British colony there was formed on August 11th, 1786, which started a long association with the British and the rest of Malaya, as it was known then. This association would go on for over a hundred years Penang was the first ever British settlement in Southeast Asia and one of the first to be colonised after the loss of North America. This formed the second wave of the then still powerful British Empire. Britain's association with Penang and Malaysia is still evident today, with all of the old colonial buildings, many of which are still in a good state of repair. The capital of Penang Island is called Georgetown and is named after Britain's King George III, who was the ruler at the time of its colonisation. Georgetown has some of the best preserved colonial buildings in Southeast Asia. Such is the importance of this area. In 2008, it was granted a UNESCO World Heritage status so as to assure its long-term preservation as Penang entered its next stage of development. The most obvious building in Georgetown is the Comtar Tower, 
with its distinctive 12-sided geometric shape. This area has fallen into disrepair over the past few years and is currently the focus of a large renovation scheme. It would be hard to talk about Penang without mentioning food. Penang is famous for its wide range of local cuisine. All sorts of food is available here. Malay, Indian, Chinese, and of course, Western. Penang is regarded as serving some of the best food in Asia and is often referred to as the food capital of Malaysia. At night, the main seafront on Penang Island comes to life as the restaurants beckon in the hungry locals and tourists with their varied menus. This area is called Gurney Drive and is one of the main focal points on the island. Along here there are many restaurants and bars, as well as hotels and shopping centres, many of which have only recently been constructed. The state of Penang is split between the island and the mainland. Access between the mainland and Penang Island is via the Penang Bridge. This eight mile link carries traffic to and from the island. It is also possible to sail to and from Penang Island via a ferry service. In 2006, a second Penang Bridge was proposed for the island so as to ease the growing traffic congestion. This second bridge was scheduled for completion in 2013, but delays, including a partial collapse, caused the opening to be put back. The second Penang Bridge was formally opened on March 1st, 2014 just a week before I arrived. So far, the new bridge has received a lukewarm response, with many motorists still favouring the first bridge. At 15 miles in length, it is the longest bridge in both Malaysia and Southeast Asia, and cost 4.5 billion Malaysian ringgit to build. It's time to move away from Penang Island for a few moments and take a look at another part of Malaysia. We are now at a place called Cameron Highlands, a high altitude area at over 5,000 feet above sea level in central Malaysia that is rich with plant and vegetation.
strawberries are grown in this region, as well as many different types of exotic fruit and plants, including the cactus. The tropical climate of the Cameron Highlands makes it a suitable place for the growing of tea. This is the world-famous Bow Tea Plantation. Thousands of tea bushes can be seen here, all of which provide the tea that the Bow Company has been producing here for over 85 years. This scenic area provides some stunning views and you can even take a gentle walk around the plantation itself before sampling some of the tea for yourself, which of course I did. Here we are, back on the island of Penang. The climate of Malaysia is a tropical one. It is hot here for most of the year, with a season of sporadic downpours of rain, which normally occur between April and September. This is when the monsoon season occurs. Penang's daytime temperature is normally between 30 and 33 degrees, although during the beginning of 2014, the temperature here reached a sweltering 38 degrees, which was well above the average for that time of year. There are a number of beach areas on Penang Island. Many of them sit alongside each other and share the same stretch of coast. Nearby, there are many hotels and in more recent times, exclusive apartment blocks have been built for those who wish to move here permanently. There are many great places to visit on Penang Island. This is the Penang Hill Railway. Opened in 1923, this railway makes its way up the side of Penang Hill. The railway sits at a steep angle. The carriages ascend and descend by using a combination of motors pulleys and cables. The journey is a little bumpy in places, but overall it is quite smooth and stable. Although at times the car moves quite fast, especially when going down, which may not suit those with a delicate stomach. This type of rail system is called a funicular railway. 
The Penang Hill Railway was closed in 2010 for a major refit. The cars were replaced with modern ones and the tracks were overhauled. The service began running again in 2011. In total, the length of the track is over 7,000 feet and the journey to the top takes around 10 minutes. The view from the top of Penang Hill is quite spectacular. From the top it is possible to see right across Georgetown and over towards the mainland. From up here you can see many landmarks including the Komtar Tower and in the distance the first Penang Bridge. The cool temperature up here makes it a popular destination for tourists. The hill stands at over 2,700 feet above sea level and is mainly composed of granite. There is plenty of wildlife to be seen here in both Penang and across Malaysia. Needless to say, I was able to spot some exotic birds during my stay. This hungry egret patiently waits on a rock for a fish to swim by. A little heron sits in a tree while preening itself. Perhaps the breeding season has begun. Some more egrets dart around on the beach, hoping to pluck a delicious fish from the shallow water. Other animals on Penang Island include monkeys, shrews, squirrels, lemurs and even the occasional wild boar. There are many parks and nature reserves here in Penang, including the botanical gardens. And the Penang butterfly farm. There is also a national park here, which has protected status. Despite Penang's small size and large population, nature conservation is taken very seriously here.
during the past 10 years or so, Penang has undergone a transformation. Many new apartment blocks were built here. Social housing and luxury apartment blocks were constructed. As well as many new hotels and shopping centres. The island has certainly altered since my last visit here in 2001. Whether or not these changes are for the better is open for debate. But overall, Penang seems as vibrant and as alive as it ever was. Around 5 million people visit Penang each year, making it one of the most popular tourist destinations in Malaysia. currency in Malaysia is the ringgit. It is normally abbreviated to RM. For me, the exchange rate here is quite good, with one British pound being worth around five and a half ringgit. Although I have noticed that your money does not buy as much here as it used to. Before we finish, let's take one last look at some of the sights we have seen today. I hope you have enjoyed this little look at the island of Penang in Malaysia and that you will join me again for another lesson very soon. This is Mr Duncan back in England saying thank you for watching me, teaching you and of course, ta-ta for now. There's a hole here. I fell in the hole. <laughs>